So hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. It's great to see so many of you here. Uh, to say a little bit more about myself, uh, I am a software engineer uh, working at Red Hat. However, you can see me as more as an open source enthusiast right now, and of course, a uh, best scripting fan. So uh, what can you expect to get, uh, get uh, uh, to learn yeah, when you leave? Uh, so uh, nowadays, uh, we still write bash scripts. There is still a huge interest uh, to write them. However, let's say the means how to write them, they almost haven't changed. So uh, in the beginning, uh, I will kind of try to get us on the same page what does a good script mean in practice? Yeah? How a script that meets expectations should look like? Then uh, I'll propose some theoretical way how to do it. And finally, uh, we will have an exciting live demo. So it will hopefully convince you that writing is 20th century and uh, generating is the way to go. So to summarize, we all use those command line apps because they are easy to script. It's very fast to execute what you want. So let's a little bit uh, check out how, do, how can we use command line utilities. Yeah, so we all use, for example, the ls command. And what is the difference between the first, second, and third invocation here? The answer is that there is no difference for the command itself. The forms are different, but ls does always the same thing. Yeah, so we can say dash L space, dash A space, dash W space 10, which means long output, uh, ignore obvious files that are there in the, in the listing that LS does, uh, the, uh, limit the width of the output to 10 columns, and then uh, list contents of directory dash X, directory foo, directory bar. The green arguments are called optional because it's uh, usually an option, which is like this, uh, dash something, and option might or may not be succeeded by a value. Yeah, like dash w10, it's an optional argument with value 10. And there are positional arguments that follow. On the second invocation, we see that we can connect two optional arguments into, let's say, one group, and we can glue uh, the value to the, to the option. So the parsing logic of LS is supposed to handle this, and we kind of use it. Yeah, some, some of you definitely do. Finally, in the, in the last row, we see that we can limit or we can terminate the optional part of the script, and uh, what follows will not be interpreted as options. Yeah? So if we want to list the directory dash x, we don't have to escape it anymore. And again, when you write some scripts that, uh, are, that let's say, uh, are supposed to be used by command line, of course, then uh, good behave scripts is supposed to behave that way. Uh, how is it called? It is called POSIX standard, which is a little bit old. However, if you manage to get your hands on some books that are like depicted here, uh, I, got, I got them via the book humble bundle, so uh, it was not so expensive. Then uh, this is what you will learn. Yeah, that the good command line interface looks like this, and you are supposed to use utilities, get opt, get opt to implement it. However, the world has changed since then quite significantly, I would say. And there is one more standard that is like uh, shaping how we use bash scripts. And this is called the GNU standard. And what it introduced? It introduced long options. So you write dash dash and something descriptive, yeah? something what people can read and what helps the readability of what goes on when the script is executed. Moreover, uh, you are now allowed, which the POSIX standard doesn't allow that, but the GNU standard allows mixing of positional and uh, optional arguments, which means that the ls command will interpret foo as a directory and bar also as a directory, and it won't complain. So this is the GNU standard. This is not like what, what the POSIX standard says. So what can I do? I can, I can specify this uh, dash dash long option equals something, dash dash long option space something, and I can all do the, the stuff, which, which is defined by POSIX, which means like gluing arguments with values together. So if you write a well-behaved shell script, now we know that it means some hard, hard like hard data, that a good behave script confirms to the GNU standard, which means that it also confirms to the, to the POSIX standard, let's say, yeah? uh, in, in some ways. 
so in other languages, we have like a supportive network of tools that will help us to implement this logic. And Bash is not here on the list. So what do we do when we want to learn how to write good Bash scripts that are so nice to use? Well, we ask, of course. And this is a slide from 2017. We see that the question on Stack Overflow is quite popular. And now we have 2019. And the, the amount of upvotes went up almost like by, by uh, uh, the days, almost two times as much upvotes as there was. So this is a very good question, apparently. What is the answer? It has even more upvotes, or it had even more upvotes in 2017. And the accepted upvoted answer said, uh, write the parsing logic of your script in pure bash. What has changed? Changed that uh, 1,000 of upvotes actually uh, were added, let's say, which means that it's a topic which is live, it's relevant, and people somehow are satisfied with that answer, which is totally crazy, because why should you write something in Bash if you can generate it? Uh, if, you, if you check out other resources, uh, they will tell you the same. Yeah? This is not some cherry-picked uh, uh, Weku example. It's really, uh, it's really what, what you will find on, on like knowledge basis. So why is it? Why, the answer, uh, why, why is the answer in such a, such a way? So other languages have modules. Bash doesn't have any standard library. Bash doesn't have packaging. So uh, if you have a parsing module, like a parsing library, you would have to bundle it with your script. So you have a 10-line script and 1,000-line uh, library bundled with that. How does it sound? Terrible, right? So this is why we don't use modules. Uh, yeah, moreover, there are modules, of course, but they are poorly documented. And sometimes they are not portable. Big problem. Built-ins. What is a built-in? This is getopt. Get if you write Bash scripts, you, you probably know that such a tool exists. So getopt is Bash built-in. It's OK to use it, but it provides you only with capabilities to have a POSIX interface, not the GNU interface. Yeah? So it means that it's not so convenient to use your script if, if you use getopt. If you use getopt without S, then it might work nicely, and it might not work nicely because getopt is not. Uh, portable, it has different version on different platforms, you never know what, what will happen. So, yeah, uh, and moreover, you have help message in your script, you have man page, you have bash completion, all uh, somehow reflects the interface that your script has, like what arguments it accepts, and you have to repeat it all over again. So don't repeat it, generate it. This is, it, this is what, I, what I would say. So why people don't like generators? You have to install them. They might have dependencies. Difficult to uninstall. Your system is tainted after you try to remove them, and you don't know that everything got removed successfully. Then, of course, uh, you generate something, but then the generator is updated. You change your mind. You need to regenerate again. And the question is, do you really need to save your template with the source that you fed to the generator? What if you don't have it? What if it's not uh, compatible anymore, and et cetera. This is the worry number two that people have when talking about generators. And worry number three is generated code is usually bad code. Yeah? You can't read it. If it's not good, you can't just uh, go into it and fix it because it's complicated and uh, minified sometimes. Yeah? If, you, if you talk about uh, Arc -based genera uh, Arc -based, uh, JavaScript generators. So this is concern number three. And concern number four might be, I don't want to use a module. I don't want a thousand line uh, module to bundle with my 10 line script. So the code generator should do a good job. It should not produce 1,000 line generated code. Yeah? Otherwise, I would use the module, and that is not, not a big deal. So this is why the Eggbash project uh, started. And it, has, it, it addresses those concerns quite uh, robustly, I would say. So uh, it works in such a way that the generated script is a template by itself. So you can use a generated script to generate a new script out of it. It's idempotent, of course. So if you have a generated script, you will regenerate with the same ArcBash. It's the same. But you can, uh, you can, of course, regenerate when ArcBash is upgraded. You can regenerate when you change your mind about, uh, about some, uh, let's say, options of your script. Then you can install it if you are lucky enough to have Fedora. 
uh, ArcBash uh, is in AUR in Arch Linux, and it has autoconf as a dependency, so you can even risk a GitHub install. Aside from that, there is a by popular demand, the Docker, uh, Docker image of ArcBash. It's quite crazy, but people seem to like it. I don't understand that, but why not? And there is also a web interface for the generator. Apart from that, of course, I already mentioned some possibilities what the generator could do. So ArcBash has quite some features, and they are documented, which is very nice, I would say. So uh, what are the features when, when we speak uh, about that? So ArcBash supports bash scripts that are well behaved, and it supports POSIX only scripts that people seem to like. Yeah? So uh, bash script, of course, you need a, or a, a GNU compliant shell script. It needs a lot of code to achieve the compliance. But uh, POSIX is like a very, very short, and you could probably craft it by hand. Yeah, you just pass, uh, get up some arguments, stuff like that. But uh, why to write anything while, uh, when you can have a generator? Then you can generate bash completion. Wonderful, right? And you can generate main page. And, and uh, is, there, is there anybody who has heard of doc opt? Nobody? OK. So I'll, I'll, I'll touch, touch it in the, in the demo section. It's basically a standardized help output, yeah? standardized help message. So it can, it can generate that for your script. Uh, it works on the on-demand principle, which means if there is no demand, there is no code. Your script is simple, low amount of generated code. Your script is complex, then high amount of generated code. Simple as that. And uh, it supports kind of commented mode, which means that the generated code contains comments, which enable you to like orient in the generated code and maybe fix something by yourself. That's it. And demo time. I hope the font is not too big, and you, you will still be able to see something. So let's say we want to uh, make a script which uh, mimics ls, that it accepts the width argument, dash w, dash dash width, with one value. Uh, it accepts almost all argument, which is optional. It's either on or off. And it accepts a directory yeah, as, uh, as, a, as a positional argument. So let's generate. In the argbash package, there is a tool called argbash init. And I tell it that I want a positional argument directory, optional argument width, and optional argument almost all. Then I want hints to be present in my first generation, generated output, let's say. And the output uh, will be script-m4. So let's do it. And let's see what we have generated. Ah, the font is too, too big. So I have to make it a little bit smaller. So 20, 26, so let's make it uh, 20, 32, and regular. Let's see. So uh, still a little bit big. OK. But at least you can see it. So uh, this is actually quite simple. In the bottom, there are three printfs, which are the script body. And they are supposed to print values that were supplies, supplied on the command line. Yeah? So there is erg underscore width, erg underscore almost all, erg underscore directory. Makes sense. And then we have the template section of, this, uh, of the script. So let's edit it so we can generate an actual script out of it. So this looks like a line for the option width. So the hint tells us here should go short option character. And short option character for width is w. So I will write w there. So there is a help message. I will leave that, leave that b. And then there is a default option. Uh, and I will, I will say that the width option won't have any default. Then we have the almost all option. Oh, like so this has small a. And the default is off. It's off by default, yeah? Uh, the almost all you have to specify in order to do something. Then we have a position argument directory, 
Again, the help will, will leave it, and default will be the current directory. So that's it. So this is how we used Arcbash in it uh, to generate like a, like a kickstart, and then we generate the script out of our out of our template. So the script is generated. Let's try to execute it. It prints the default, basically, right? There is there is nothing else there. So let's try the help message. And yeah, looks quite nice. So let's, let's use it and supply some arguments. With AT-A, we specify this time, and we want to list the directory home, and it works. Yeah, almost all is on. With AT, every, everything kind, kind of works. So let's produce the standardized help message, the docopt.txt, and let's check it out, how it looks like. So this is what is the standardized help message. And I will tiptoe a little bit because I will copy it and paste it to a website which consumes standardized help messages. So control C and let's see. Uh, so I will paste the standardized help message and press run. And the website parses, oh, ah, uh, oh, good. The website parses the help message and it parses also the command line on the website that you give it. So if I say dash w80, um, almost all home, it picks things up. What, what does it mean for you? It means that there is something that you were not aware of before. There is standardized help message which can be used to define argument parsers in very various languages, and ArcBash is interoperable with that. Anyway, back, back, to, back to the core of the matter. Let's check out the main page output. So I again call ArcBash, and I use the script the generated script, script.sh, as a template, yeah, if you, if you can see. So I will generate the template for the, for the man page, and let's see how it looks like. So it includes some file, and then it generates some information which can be partially obtained from the script, like uh, the, the help message, which, which, which the script knows what help it, it has, and then it has some templating functionality that you can, uh, uh, you can extend the contents of, of, of the manual with some other, uh, other contents that you know, but they are not part of the script. And now we generate additional definitions for the manual. This is another output that Arcbash has. And then again, we check that out. Yeah, and here, we can define things that the script really doesn't know. So for example, my name is J, and the version, let's say, will be 0 0.1 description. And other description with, I will say, use 80 when in doubt. Good. And now I will use the RST2Man utility, which is part of the Sphinx. This is the Python documentation system, part of the Sphinx ecosystem, and let's generate a one page. And let's see the one page. Magic, one page. Use 80 when in doubt. Author is Maciej, version is 0 0.1, yeah? So how long it took to generate a one page? It took five minutes from, uh, from the get-go, right? Okay, what next? What next? Uh, completion, completion, and that's it. Uh, then there will be questions. So I generate completion, and then I execute the completion. So script.sh, and uh, when you generate a completion file, basically you have to source it to test it immediately. Otherwise, you place it to some directory, and it gets sourced automatically, right? So. Uh, I have sourced it, and now I should get completion for my script. So 
uh, this just offers me files. This is not interesting, but if I uh, uh, enter like dash, it offers me long option. If double double dash, it it enter it offers me it offers me long options. So uh, works good. So this was the demo. I haven't shown you the documentation uh, and uh, other features, of course, because of the limited scope. However, uh, if you search for it for ArcBash in Google, you should see the read the docs uh, website with documentation examples. Yeah, uh, you don't have to worry if you don't didn't photograph that. There is plenty plenty of more, and I believe I, I believe some quick start tutorials. And of course, you can visit the ArcBash.io uh, website. Uh, and and uh, that's uh, that's that's it. That's what I wanted to tell you. So if there are any questions, we have like uh, three four minutes uh, to to handle them. Ah, question. Great question. If I want to add another argument, I will quickly I will quickly show a script modification. So script.sh. Uh, so I will modify the script. I will uh, say that the width will be 80. Yeah. So now when I execute the script uh, with the help option, it says that there is no default, and now I regenerate the script. So I say arg bash. Uh, arg bash script.sh output script.sh execute again and now it accepts default of 80. Yeah? So uh, the script itself is a template. You modify the section in the tab, uh, you modify the content in the template section of the script and uh, it's reflected in the result. Uh, we have three more minutes for questions, so please, if you could leave later. <clears throat> yeah, another question. So the question was about auto-completion, what shells are supported? So it's only the bash auto-completion which is supported at the moment. Yeah, and pull requests, welcome. Okay, seems that there is no other question. So thank you for your attention and enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>